Hi everybody, my name is Nora and I am here in Trinity College Dublin, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about our university um, and how you can come here as a U.S. student. Um, as you can tell, I'm from the States, so uh, if you have any questions about moving to Ireland, what it's like for an American in Ireland, I'm happy to answer those, as well as any questions you have about Trinity itself. So um, I'm going to go through this presentation, and if you have questions along the way, feel free to ask. Otherwise, um, I hope that you learn something. So Trinity College Dublin is Ireland's top-ranked university. Um, we were founded in 1592 by Queen Elizabeth I. Um, the campus, as you can see from the picture behind me, um, is beautiful and historic. Hopefully some of the photos in this presentation will give you a sense of the scale and grandeur of the university. Um, we are ranked currently number 61 in the world. Um, we're sort of a mid-sized university, so we have 17,000 students total. About 12,000 of those are undergrads and 5,000 are postgrads. And it's a little different here than in the States where undergrads and postgrads really kind of mix together and it gives a really interesting sort of academic experience. Um, you really get to see the research that's going on in the university in an interesting way as both an undergrad and a postgrad. Um, so you're really part of the whole community of learning and scholars and teaching right from the beginning. Uh, Trinity focuses on research-led teaching, which means that all of our academics are um, actively involved in both research in their field, so new lab experiments, new literary research, new publications in their fields, as well as doing undergraduate teaching. Uh, we pride ourselves on 420 years of academic excellence. Um, we're also a very globally connected university with partnerships all over the world with the leading universities in countries on every continent except Antarctica, unfortunately. Um, but we're, we're growing uh, every year with more and more connections with more and more universities. So that gives students a really exciting opportunity to study anywhere. Once you come here as an undergraduate, you could do your study abroad year, say back in the States if you wanted, or head off to China or Brazil, or spin a globe and see where you land. Um, let's talk a little bit about Ireland itself. Um, as hopefully you know, Ireland is sort of at the gateway of Europe. It's right at the edge. So we are about as close as you can get to the East Coast and still be in Europe. Um, it actually doesn't take that much longer to fly from New York to Dublin as it does from New York to San Francisco. So it's, it's, a, it's another country, but it's not quite as far as maybe it sounds. Um, we are a small island country, which means that it's beautiful. We're surrounded by the ocean, um, cliffs everywhere you look, as you can sort of see in the image there. Um, and it's also one of the safest countries in the world. We are ranked in the top 10 on the Global Peace Index. Um, so it's the kind of country that even though you might be far away from home, you definitely would feel safe and secure, which is important. Um, Trinity is in Dublin, the capital of Ireland, um, and we're right in the center of the city. So unlike a lot of sort of US universities that have enclosed campuses, we're right smack dab in the middle of the city. The way that I kind of think about it is the location of NYU, but the campus of Columbia. So Dublin, as you can see on the map, um, is divided by the River Liffey, and we are just beside it. You can't really get much more central than Trinity. Uh, we've been a landmark in the city for over 400 years, and it's the kind of thing that uh, people who live and work in the city come through Trinity all the time because it's just right there in the middle, which also means that Trinity students have the opportunity to really be engaged in the city. Um, you're very much living in Dublin when you go to Trinity. You're not sort of out in the suburbs or out in the country. Uh, you get involved in the Trinity community, but also the Dublin community, which is a really unique opportunity um, for you during your, your time at university. Uh, Dublin is a European capital, and so we have everything that goes along with that. 
um, great opportunities for work experience in politics and corporations, great culture. Dublin is famous for its music and theater and literature. Um, people here speak English. It might take you a little while to get used to the accent, but that's part of the fun. Um, we're also ranked one of the top 10 best student cities in the world. I think right now we're eighth in Dublin. Um, Dublin is also very accessible to the rest of Ireland. So you can get on the local sort of commuter rail um, and get out to the sea without owning a car, which is really nice. Um, you can get out and go hiking in the mountains on the weekends, or you can stay in town and go see a show. It's a very cosmopolitan city. So you kind of have both options there of being sort of a city resident, an urban dweller, but um, access to the outdoors and to the rest of Ireland really easily. Also, Dublin Airport is a hub for Ryanair and Aer Lingus, which are both low-cost carriers to the rest of Europe. So it's a really good place to live if you want to do some exploring while you're in university, um, which just makes it a really fun place to go to school. Um, so I suppose that's about Dublin and Ireland, but let's talk about Trinity specifically, and let's talk a little bit about academics, because we know that's why you're going to college. Um, as I said, we have research-led teaching. Um, degrees here are a little bit different. So at an undergrad level, you specialize sooner than you would in the States. You apply specifically for your degree. So you can't apply kind of undeclared the way you can at a lot of US schools. Um, but that doesn't mean that you are limited in the kinds of courses you can take. Um, if you know you want to study something like English literature, it's a really good option because you don't have to necessarily take, you know, a science requirement that you're not interested in or a maths requirement that you're not interested in. You can just start studying the things that you are passionate about. There's also an option to take courses outside of your discipline in something that we call the broad curriculum. And then, in addition to sort of the single honors streams, there are several multidisciplinary courses like business, economics, and social science, as well as philosophy, politics, economics, and sociology, which um, are right there in the title in terms of the disciplines that they cover. But you could say enter as a BESS, the business, economics, and social sciences student. And then over the course of your studies, you realize that the things that interest you there the most are economics and sociology. So then by the time you finish, that's what you've specialized in. We also have a common entry science program. So that means that if you know you want to go into science, but you aren't necessarily sure if you want to be a physicist or an earth scientist or a chemist, you enter common entry science and you get a really great broad-based foundation in science training. Um, and you take courses that are aligned with your interests. So if you kind of know you want to be in the physical sciences, or you kind of know you want to be in the earth sciences, you can specialize soon. And then at the end of your second year, you, you decide which strand you want to pursue. And there's about 16 different strands that you can, um, that you can choose. So that's a really good way, if you know you're interested in science, to avoid all those pesky liberal arts requirements at um, a lot of schools that have kind of a liberal arts core requirement. Um, but it doesn't limit you from taking a literature course if that's what you want to do. You can always take a broad curriculum course in addition to your, um, your degree. So that also means that you can continue your language training if you have been taking a language in high school. Um, and we have a number of two-subject moderatorship options, which is primarily in the arts, humanities, and social science. So you can, say, pair psychology with English or history with the history of art or something along those lines. Um, the course options are available on our website if you want to look more specifically at the kinds of courses that are available to you. Um, I would encourage you to visit www.tcd.ie slash courses and there'll be a listing there and you can look through kind of everything that would be available to you as an incoming undergraduate or postgraduate. Um, we are ranked in the top 1% of universities in 
nearly 20 fields. So we don't really specialize in one specific thing, um, but Trinity's rep reputation is really strong across a number of fields. Um, so the facilities here in Trinity are pretty spectacular. Um, we are home to the Book of Kells, which is a, an illuminated manuscript from 800 AD. Um, one of the most spectacular examples of that type of, of printing. Um, it's housed in our old library, which as you can see from the picture there on your screen, is the kind of library you imagine when you think about going to university. Um, we also have quite a few new buildings. So if you're interested, particularly in the sciences, we have some really cutting edge kind of architecture and laboratory design in our CRAN Nanoscience Institute, as well as our recently opened Biomedical Sciences Institute. Um, and then we've got a great sports center with a climbing wall. Um, we have some performance spaces and a really interesting mix, actually, of the old and the new here in Trinity. Um, the city center campus is surrounded by gates. So you kind of, you're right in the middle of the city, but you walk in and suddenly you're inside of Trinity and you can really feel the kind of Trinity community welcoming you when you walk in the gates. Um, but once you're in, it's actually quite big. It's deceptive from the outside. You'd think a gated campus would feel small, but as you're walking through, it's 47 acres. So it's bigger, it's bigger than it looks from the outside. Um, let's talk a little bit about student life. Um, I see that I have a question about university sports teams. And yes, we do have sports teams. It's a little different here though. Um, sports are at a sort of a, at a club level of what you would sort of, in terms of comparable sports in the US. Um, we, you would compete, you have the opportunity to compete with um, against other universities, but then also you have the opportunity to say, take up a new sport, which at US schools, isn't as much of an option because you kind of have to already be elite at your sport before you go to college in order to really be involved in it. Whereas at Trinity, if you say join the swim club, you can be a world-class competitive swimmer and swim for Trinity in the intercollegiate competitions. Um, but you can also just want to go to swim training because you'd really like to improve your strokes. Um, and that's sort of a really nice way of exploring new things. Um, Trinity has over 200 independent student organizations, which encompasses student societies, which in the States you'd call clubs, um, sports clubs, and also publications. We have two of the oldest student societies in the world, and they are the oldest debating societies in the world. They're sort of rival debating societies called the Phil and the Hist. Um, and they debate in beautiful debating chambers, and it's all very um, Hogwartsian, to be honest. Uh, Trinity is also home to the largest private party in Europe called the Trinity Ball, which is uh, a singular Trinity experience that you kind of have to see to believe, but the Students' Union organizes essentially a music festival uh, that happens all over campus, and it lasts all night long. It's private, it's black tie, it's outdoors, it's intense. The campus looked beautiful. It's all lit up in crazy colors. And it's just sort of indescribable, actually. Um, but it's one of those Trinity experiences that everybody who goes here talks about and everybody has in common when they leave and they talk about the Trinity Ball. Um, OK, so when you come to Trinity, it can be a little difficult to adjust. Um, but we have a lot of student services in place to help you with things like that. So in addition to sort of the sort of things you would expect, uh, an on-campus health center, um, a very active counseling service that's accessible to you, a disability service, learning development, um, a chaplaincy, uh, we have our careers advisory service, the students' unions, and then dedicated welfare officers within the students' unions who's job it is to deal with student queries um, that are sort of not necessarily academic related. Um, but most of all, Trinity has the tutorial system. So every student is assigned a personal tutor 
who is within their faculty, but not necessarily within their department, which is a senior academic who has a lot of experience dealing with undergraduate issues and is sort of your first port of call if you're having any sort of issue. It doesn't have to be academic. Um, they will help direct you to the kinds of services and people that can help you within college. But if you do have an academic issue, they're also a very good person to go to to help sort of handle it, deal with it, figure out the next step. Um, so that's something that Trinity has that's kind of unique. Um, it really gives you a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with an academic, and it means you get to know them um, and you have access. They're, they're always available to you. Um, we take good care of our undergrads here. Um, in terms of career development, Trinity has the careers office, as I've mentioned. Um, but Dublin itself is a really great place if you're looking to get involved in sort of innovative, multinational kind of corporate work. Um, if you wanted to get work experience, Dublin is the EU headquarters of a lot of major international corporations. So Google, Facebook, Twitter, Intel, HP. There's a lot. I could go on for a while. But um, Dublin has made it a point, Ireland has made it a point to be a, a sort of center for innovation. And Dublin, as the capital, has attracted a lot of these kind of innovative companies to set up their EU headquarters here, which means that as a student, you have kind of access to go finding internships with these kinds of companies. Um, and once you graduate, you would be permitted to stay for a year without needing a work permit and be able to get a full-time job. Um, while you're a student from the US, you don't need a visa before you arrive, but once you arrive, you would have to register with the Immigration Bureau, and that registration would give you permission to work up to 20 hours a week. So that's about a half-time job, um, which is a really good opportunity for getting work experience and doing internships, but also just getting extra income, working in a cafe or a shop. Um, so you're, you're able to work up to 20 hours a week during kind of teaching term, but you would be able to work full time out of teaching term. So on holidays and things, you could work full time. Um, we also have um, work placement officers who work with, with international students. Um, to help sort of get international work experience and also help with um, preparing your CV because we use CVs here instead of resumes and preparing for interviews because it can be a little different um, going into an Irish company than it would be going into an American company. So helping you kind of um, adjust to a new place and, and get work experience abroad, which can be really, really valuable when you go back home, if you go back home, um, because, you know, companies are definitely looking for kind of global graduates these days. Um, one statistic that I really like is that Trinity graduates earn 30% more than other Irish graduates within the first five years after graduation. Um, so it really shows that employers in Ireland in particular really respect a Trinity degree and that Trinity really prepares you to enter the workforce. Um, which is important. So let's talk about some of the famous alumni that have gone to Trinity. Um, you may be familiar with some of our, particularly our literary graduates, um, Samuel Beckett, Bram Stoker, author of Dracula, um, Oscar Wilde, famous playwright, poet, author, gentleman. Um, so those are some of the the older graduates of Trinity. More recently, Dominic West, the star of The Wire, went to Trinity. Um, Anne Enright, who is an author and won the Booker Prize in 2007, um, went to Trinity. And a number of Irish presidents and Irish politicians, and really sort of a lot of the people who are running the running the country and running the, the top corporations are Trinity grads. Um, it's a great community, and it's also a worldwide network. We have over 95,000 alumni living and working in 130 different countries. So really anywhere you go, there's going to be a Trinity alumni office, and they're going to be able to um, 
network with you and put you in touch with other Trinity alums. And that's really helpful when you say move to a new place and are looking to get settled um, or looking to get a job. We currently have 5,000 Trinity alum living in the US. So there's alumni chapters across the states, uh, West Coast, East Coast, Midwest. Um, and they hold events and have sort of mentoring and networking possibilities. So a Trinity degree will really carry you a long way pretty much anywhere you want to live. Um, our academic faculties are divided sort of as you can see on screen. Um, we have a health sciences faculty, which does things like medicine and dentistry, as well as pharmacy and nursing. Um, and then our engineering, mathematics, and science faculty um, is where you would enter if you were going to do the common entry science program. Um, and then our arts, humanities, and social sciences encompasses quite a few schools, as you can see here. And then within those schools are individual departments. So if you wanted to see kind of how all of that breaks down, I would direct you again to the website to www.tcd.ie slash structure. And you can see all the different departments that would be available to you if you wanted to um, get in touch with them and maybe see what kinds of things were on offer or if you had any specific questions for the individual departments. Um, you'd be more than welcome to get in touch with them directly. Um, okay, so kind of the nitty gritty, I suppose. Entry requirements. Um, Trinity looks at your holistic application coming from the US. I think that it's, it's really useful for international students um, applying to Trinity to understand how the Irish acceptance system works because it's quite different and I think it gives you an idea of um, the kind of how they look at your application differently as an international student. Um, Irish students take an exam called the Leaving Certificate and their entrance into university is based entirely on the score that they get on that exam. Um, so for international students, they look at kind of everything because there's no real one-to-one -one comparison between the leaving certificate and any of the qualifications that you get in the US. It's not the same as the SAT, so they can't just look at the SAT. It's not the same as GPA, so they can't just look at GPA. So basically what, what we've done or what the admissions office has done is set kind of minimum standards that they look at applications who meet those minimum standards. Now, meeting the minimums doesn't necessarily mean you would get in, and certain courses are more competitive than others, um, which you can actually gauge if you look at the, every year they will publish the number of points required for the leaving certificate. Um, to get into individual courses. So you can kind of gauge the competitiveness of any given course. And so because you're applying to a specific course rather than to the university as a whole, um, if you're nervous about, say, how competitive your number one choice is, I would encourage you actually to make m maybe two to three applications. Um, if Also, if you aren't sure. You know, like if you're filling out your application in November, and you aren't sure what you're going to want to be studying in a year, then apply for a couple, see what happens, and you can sort of make your decision then in, um, in May when you would be giving us your, your final answer. So entry requirements are your grade point average out of a 4.0. We don't look at weighted grades. Um, so we'd want to see your GPA unweighted. And if it comes to us weighted, we will recalculate it unweighted. Um, so we want to see at least a 3.3. So that's a B plus. We want to see at least a B plus, um, And we want to see that you've taken honors classes. We just don't want them weighted in your GPA. Um, for an SAT, we're looking at 1,300 out of two of the three subjects. So a 1,300 out of 1,600 and no subject below a 600. So on the SAT 2, we would consider it successful if you're over a 600. And we'd want to see the scores if they're over 600. They're not required SAT 2s, but they would definitely help your application. Um, and especially if you're applying to a particularly competitive course, if you had an SAT 2 in that subject area that showed 
your commitment and your strength in that subject, then that would really help your application. The same thing goes for AP exams. They're not required, but they're helpful. Um, we look at a score of four and above as successful. We don't take a three as being a successful AP score. Um, and then if you're taking the ACT instead, um, you need at least a 26, but really we'd be looking for higher than that. Um, and then the IB requirements are listed there on the screen, and you can also find them on the website because they're a little bit more detailed, and they depend a little bit on the course that you're looking for. So um, on our admissions website, you'd be able to find an IB conversion table that will sort of show you how you calculate the necessary IB scores based on the necessary leaving certificate points for Irish students. And that's kind of how they determine, say, the points required for engineering versus the IB points required for history, because they can be different. Um, oh, OK, we have a question on the percentage of acceptance for students in the US. And honestly, that's not a number that I have. Um, I can tell you that the selectivity for Irish students is that we take about the top 10% of leaving certificate students. So it's very competitive. Um, for the US, the, the difference is that we don't get a lot of students applying who don't meet the minimum standards. So it's a little bit of a different comparison, if that makes sense. And we haven't actually, the admissions office doesn't keep statistics on percentage of acceptance for US students. But if you wanted to talk specifically about your grades or your GPA or your SAT scores and how you feel those might look to the admissions office, how competitive you might be as an applicant, you should get in touch with Caroline Enright or Karen Finnegan, who work with US students when they're applying. Um, and I'll have their contact details for you on the screen in just a moment. Um, they are not admissions officers, and so they can talk to you about how to make your application stronger and what kinds of courses you would be competitive for. So you could say, you know, I'm really interested in history and French. How difficult would that be based on my APs and my grades? And is there something that I should be doing to sort of increase my chances in my senior year? Because our application system doesn't actually open until November. So it's, um, it's important that you sort of start putting, your, start putting your necessary components of your application together, but you don't actually have to apply until January if you don't want to. Um, there's no necessarily, there's not necessarily a benefit to applying earlier. Um, we would ask that you apply, here I'll go to that, that slide now, how to apply. We would ask that you apply before February 15th if you want a decision before April 1st. Because what we do is sort of a rolling admissions process. Um, you can expect an admissions decision about six to eight weeks, within about six to eight weeks of applying. Um, so if you want a decision before April 1st to sort of line up with maybe your US acceptance letters, you would need to apply by the 15th of February. You can start applying in November, um, apply through February. Um, if you feel like your second or your first semester senior year grades will help your application, then I would say apply in January or the beginning of February. Um, because anything that can strengthen your application is obviously great. Um, the application is all online. So basically what you do is you go to that tcd.ie slash courses. You pick the course you want to study. And then you click the link apply um, under non-EU, since the US is not in the EU. Um, and there's a little example of that with the, the button highlighted in the red box there on the screen. Um, so we're going to need to see the documents that support your GPA, your SAT scores, um, two letters of recommendation, ideally one from a counselor and one from a, an academic. Um, and then the application fee. Um, so 
I'm going to, I have a question about sports, but I'm just going to get through this kind of boring funding cost stuff quickly. And then we'll talk about the more fun things. Um, so you can see on the screen kind of the, the general costs for an undergrad degree. Trinity is very competitively priced. Um, we're listed as a FISC Best Buy. So that means that for the quality of education that you're getting, the cost is incredibly competitive. Um, the tuition is 50% of the tuition at Brown and is 10% less than the University of St. Andrews in, in Scotland. Um, you can see there the, the living costs in Dublin. They're not low, but they're pretty comparable to what you'd be looking at in terms of room and board kind of costs in the US. Um, the, the cost of tuition varies by course. So science co courses cost a bit more than arts and humanities courses because of things like lab costs and things like that. Um, so there are websites there, the tcd.ie slash financial services slash fees would have up-to-date information on fees because they will be announcing the fees for next year um, within the next few months, but those won't be set in stone um, quite yet. So in terms of funding, um, Trinity has what's called the Foundation Scholarship, which is a competitive scholarship that you take an exam for, I know, super fun, um, in the second year of your degree. So it's incredibly prestigious. Um, you take an exam in your discipline, in your field, um, and the very top results are awarded the Foundation Scholarship. So it's not something you can count on. It's something you should definitely try for, but it's not something that you should sort of wing because they're tough exams. Um, but the benefits of a foundation scholarship are incredible. Um, you get a tuition waiver, which means for non-EU students, your, your fee status changes to EU fee status, which is significantly less. Um, you are entitled to campus accommodation, and you are entitled to dinner um, at Commons, which is in the, um, in the dining hall and is the sort of traditional um, academic meal served in college every day. Um, one great thing about this scholarship is that it's good for five years. So if you're awarded the scholarship at the end of your second year, that means it's good for the final two years of your undergraduate degree, and then you have three years to do graduate work um, basically for free uh, or for EU fee status rather than non-EU fee status and you still get to keep your accommodation and you still get to keep your dinners. Um, it's also just sort of a lifelong status that you have in college and it puts you amongst a really elite group of students um, and alumni. Um, it's a really sort of classic Trinity program. Um, so I'm just going to put up on screen the contact details for Caroline and Karen, who um, would be your best points of contact for U.S. questions. Um, Karen is actually based in the U.S., so she's on East Coast time instead of Irish time. Um, and Caroline is based in Dublin, but she travels in the U.S. a lot. So if you have questions about applications and things like that, they're really good people to go to, and they'll be happy to give you as much detail as you want in terms of walking through your specific application. Um, so, hi Kelly, I see your question. Um, in the US, coaches can issue likely letters for athletes. Do you have anything like this if a student is coming over to play a specific sport? So it's a little bit different here because we don't offer kind of sports scholarships quite in the same way that a US school would. Um, so you, you probably, whew, you'd have to talk to the athletic department directly and you'd have to talk to the coach about, um, about the, the way that that would kind of work in Trinity. Um, but sort of the short answer is not really. Um, it's, it's not quite the same as the, say, NCAA recruitment process. Um, so hmm, I think that you might want to email um, Caroline Enright about that question. Um, her email address is C-E-N-R-I-G-H at tcd.ie. 
Um, she'll be able to put you in touch with the specific sport um, organization here in college that uh, that applies to you specifically, because um, that's probably the best the best way to get the information that you need. Um, do AP exam scores earned in high school transfer to college credit? No. Um, we do not accept AP scores for credit. We accept AP scores for admission. Um, as I said, APs are not required, but they do help your application a lot, um, especially if you're going into something like English and you have a really high either English language or English literature AP score that's obviously going to help your application. Um, or if you're going into physics and you have a five on the AP physics, super. Um, we also like that you've taken AP classes even if you don't necessarily take the exam. So like if you're looking at, at setting your schedule, which maybe you already are, but maybe if you're, if you're in your junior year and you're looking at setting your schedule, we definitely like to see AP classes on there um, because we want to see you challenging yourself. But just like a lot of kind of the top, the, mo the most selective U.S. schools, we don't give credit for AP exams um, because they're just not quite the same um, as, as the courses that we offer in your first couple years. Um, so here's a question. If accepted to TCD as an international student, what do students do with their belongings during the summer months? That's a really good question, Kevin. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about accommodation. In your first year as an international student, you would be, as an international undergraduate student, I have to be careful a little bit here, in your first year as an international undergrad, you would be very likely to be housed in Trinity Hall if you wanted university accommodation. Accommodation here in Trinity, because we're a city center school, is also different than in the US. Only about 10% of our students live in Trinity accommodation and the rest of them live in private accommodation throughout Dublin. So shared houses, shared apartments, that sort of thing. Um, which is great and you, you know, live with your friends and sort of, it's a little bit more, I don't know, adult than living in dorms. Um, but in your first year, you would be very likely to live in Trinity Hall, which is a residential campus a couple kilometers south of the city center. Um, they have sort of everything you would need down there um, in terms of kind of a living community. Um, so during the summer in between your first year and your second year, you'd probably ask a friend to store your belongings um, because in your second year, you'd be very likely to go into private accommodation with your friends. And once you go into private accommodation, there's a good chance you can stay in the same house or apartment for the rest of your time in Trinity. You don't necessarily have to move every year as you would in the US if you're in a dorm and you're moving from dorm to dorm. So you could potentially leave your things um, in your apartment if you're not going to stay for the summer. Um, even if you're subletting it to someone else, you could probably find a closet. Um, you, there's also options for, for finding private storage, obviously, um, renting a storage unit, which a lot of people do in the States anyway. Um, I mean, I went to school in Boston and I'm from Chicago, so during the summer, if I wasn't staying in Boston, I sort of hired um, uh, a storage facility with a couple friends and we left our stuff. Um, so it's not too bad. You also have the option to stay for the summer um, because remember, with that work permission, you can work up to full time uh, in your holidays. So over the summer, you could potentially get an internship, um, which would be really useful for your CV. Um, so there'd be a lot of options for what international students would do with their do with their things, but that's a really that's a really good question. Um, okay, so let's talk, I suppose, a little bit about um, I don't know what do you guys want to talk about? Um, let's see. Okay, um, something to think about when you're looking at. Um, when you're looking at funding a Trinity education is that we do accept FAFSA loans. So if you were going to use, say, U.S. federal student aid 
um, or a U.S. federal student loan, um, that is applicable to, to Trinity. We are accredited with the U.S. government and with the, um, the loan providers in the U.S. So in the same way as you could get a loan to fund your university education in the States, you can use it here, um, which can be a really good option, but obviously um, something that you probably want to talk to your, talk to your parents about. Um, can you transfer from an undergraduate private Irish college to Trinity as an undergrad to get academic references under your belt for a mature student? Um, for a mature student, we, we look at mature students from Ireland in a different way than we look at um, sort of leaving certificate age students from Ireland. There is a mature student um, application process that involves an interview and your CV, um, and that process is available online um, on the admissions webpage. So it's absolutely possible to come to Trinity um, as a mature student. Um, and if you have some experience in private Irish colleges, uh, that would absolutely help. I'm not sure sort of what your specific um, situation would be in terms of whether you'd be eligible for advanced entry or not, which is what we call um, what, what we call and have call a transfer. So in the U.S., you can say transfer from your sophomore year at one college to your junior year at a different college. Here we call that advanced entry. So if you are in your freshman or sophomore or even junior year at uh, a U.S. university, you can apply for advanced entry to Trinity. Um, because our degrees are a bit different and because you start studying your, say, your essentially your major right from the very beginning, Whereas in the U.S., you might do kind of um, core subjects in the first couple of years of, um, of university and then sort of specialize in your major in the second two years. Um, it can be a little bit different. It's not necessarily one-to-one. -one. So if you've done two years at a U.S. university, there's a chance you might be accepted into the second year here rather than the third year. But it really depends on the kinds of courses that you've taken and the course that you're applying to here. Um, just in terms, of, in terms of the language of things, um, we call classes, what you would call classes in the US, um, in Trinity we call them modules, and then we call your major your course. So the degree that you're doing is called your course. Um, let's see, oh I have a question about funding. Um, how do you apply for the FAFSA loans? The universities in the USA usually handle the paperwork. Do we need to apply directly through FAFSA? Okay, so yes you need to um, complete the student aid something, SAR, I don't remember what that stands for, um, but you need to complete that, which I, you would also have to do for the US. Basically, you need to complete all the paperwork through FAFSA to get your um, sort of what it, FAFSA will tell you what you're qualified for in terms of amount of money, um, and then you sort of tell Trinity that you've done that, and eventually Trinity will um, take over the process and correspond directly with FAFSA. So the money will go to Trinity um, and and not you don't have to sort of get the, the check and then bring it to us or anything like that. Um, but the process for applying U.S. student loans to Trinity is available on the treasurer's website in the student fees section. So if you go to the Trinity webpage and go to the, Trini or the treasurer's office, um, under student fees, there's a whole process for what documents you need to fill out, who you need to contact, about letting them know that you have applied for FAFSA to be used at Trinity. Basically what happens is, let's just take round numbers for example. If you apply for $20,000 in U.S. federal aid and your tuition is $15,000, Trinity will get a check, well Trinity will get two checks, one in the first semester for 10,000 and one in the second semester for 10,000 to add up to the total 20. And you will get the difference. So Trinity will get the check from the government, the tuition will be deducted and whatever's left over will go to you for living expenses. So you figure out how much you want to borrow based on 
both your tuition and how much you expect your living expenses to be. Um, I can comment. Oh, I have a question from a Canadian. I'm sorry, I've been talking about the US so much. Can you please comment on the entry requirements from students from Alberta, Canada? Wow, I really wish that I knew specifically what we needed from Alberta. Um, I know that from Canada we need to see your high school transcript and your final examination scores. Um, if you haven't taken the SAT, then we definitely need to see your final examination scores. Um, but you should actually send an email to non-EU degree. So all one word, non-EU degree at tcd.ie and ask for the, the entry requirements for Al Alberta specifically because I know that it's different in each province um, kind of what the high school qualifications what you get from your high school what your what your um, final exams are, are are province by province so I know that they have those in the admissions office I just don't have that table in front of me right now but non EU degree at tcd.ie is the email address for any queries you have on your actual application and once you've applied that's who you talk to about sending in your reference letters for example if you aren't able to upload them online or things like that um, so Caroline and Karen who I'll leave their contact details up there they're really great for any questions you have about is Trinity right for me what is this what is this course like what would this degree be like all of those kinds of things before you apply. Once you apply, and you, if you want to talk to the admissions office directly, you should email non-EU degree at tcd.ae. That's a good email address to remember. Um, if you want to find out more about sort of Trinity's place in the world and our kind of global partnerships and global connections and the kinds of universities um, that we have we have contact with and we have um, partnerships and agreements with you should check out our global relations webpage at www.tcd.ie slash global relations I have another question from a mature student how do mature students get into your college without an academic reference um, well we would if you're applying as an Irish mature student you need um, references from, say, your employers um, or professional references. Um, and if you're applying as a U.S. mature student, um, you would need something similar. Although you, the thing is, we still need to see your um, your high school transcript or your um, your most recent kind of academic work. Um, so if you've done, say, community college um, work or uh, an associate's degree or something along those lines, we would need those transcripts, but we would also need to see things like your SAT scores, even if they're out of date. Um, so references, I suppose, professional references would be the next best thing. Um, but we really want to see references from people who can comment on your intellectual engagement. What we really want to see in, um, in our students is sort of an intellectual curiosity. The thing about international students that come to Trinity and what makes sort of the kind of U.S. student that's looking to go abroad for university rather than looking to stay in the States, what makes them kind of stand out is that they tend to be independently minded, um, aware of sort of the value of global citizenship um, and inquisitive and willing to try different things and so your academic references can kind of help support that about your character you know showing kind of your your intellectual curiosity the kinds of ways that you've engaged in your school or in your intellectual life generally um, and of course obviously we're looking for a strong academic record of achievement um, and a sense of the kinds of things you want to study. Not that you need to know exactly what you want to study when you apply, um, because we do have those sort of more multidisciplinary courses like BESC 
the business economics and social science or PPES or the common entry science or any of a number of two subject moderatorship which we call TSM courses um, so if you go on and look at the the courses page you'll really see that um, the diversity of the offerings, uh, which I think is one of the strengths of Trinity, is just how many things you can learn here. Um, also, the great thing about Trinity is that students are really encouraged to not just go to school. Students are really encouraged to get very involved in student societies, get very involved in the community, and that is seen as an absolutely integral part of your education and your time in university. So students getting involved in societies here get really strong experience in terms of leadership um, and sort of dealing with, say, finances or organization or um, like event planning and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so if you're, say, a scientist who's really interested in literature, but you know you want to be a scientist, um, you'd absolutely have the opportunity to join the literary society, join one of the publications, um, and it's not really kind of discipline specific in terms of the people that get involved in those kinds of those kinds of student societies. Um, one of our new things for international students, actually, that just opened, it's very exciting, is um, the Trinity Global Room. So it's a it's a new facility. It's a social space. It's kind of a lounge. It's kind of an event space. It's got a giant wall of televisions with 300 some international news channels where you can go have your lunch, go study a bit, go meet your friends, watch CNN or a movie. Um, there's events in there all the time. Um, and it's also a really good resource in terms of sort of a one-stop shop. If you're having a problem, you're not sure which of the many Trinity supports to go to, um, you can pop in and ask one of the specially trained global student ambassadors um, to sort of direct you in where to find the kinds of stuff that you need. Um, it's also just a really cool space. Um, so I hope that you guys will come visit and get to see it. I think that the best way to get a sense of what it's like to be a Trinity student is to pay us a visit. Um, convince your parents that you need to take a family trip to Ireland. Um, we do student tours, which you can sign up for on the website. Um, you'll get a chance to talk to a student ambassador, see the global room, see all the facilities. Um, also, please get in touch with us if you have questions. Get in touch with Caroline, get in touch with Karen, get in touch with me. My name is Nora. My email address is Nora, N-O-R-A, dot Pelizari, P-E-L-I-Z-Z, a R I, I know I'll do it again, at tcd.ie. So that's Nora, N O R A, dot Pelizari, P E L I Z Z A R I, at tcd.ie. And feel free to get in touch with any of us. And again, if you have questions specifically for admissions requirements and specifically for Canada, because they're a little bit um, more diverse from, say, province to province, get in touch with the admissions department at non-EU degree at tcd.ie. Look at the website. Hopefully the information that you need is there. There's an international student guide on there um, for you to look at. So if those don't answer your questions, absolutely get in touch. We would absolutely love to hear from you. Um, if you want to see more about the kinds of global things that are happening around Trinity, um, follow us on Facebook, the Trinity College TCD Global Relations um, on Facebook, and we'll have updates on global events happening on campus and um, our delegation's trips abroad. Um, if you live in Boston, New York, Seattle, San Francisco, San Diego, or LA, or Washington, DC, um, keep your eyes peeled on the Global Relations webpage because we have a delegation going to the US in just a couple weeks. Um, so there could be events in your city if you wanted to meet somebody in person. Um, I will be back to do a text chat if you want to get more specific with your questions. Um, I'll be back in an hour at 2 p.m. your time, um, and I'll be around for about an hour. So that will be, you won't get to see me, sorry.
but um, I'd be happy to answer your questions via chat then as well. Um, so I hope that this has been helpful and useful, and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to welcome you to Trinity and show you what our campus is like because it's really a special place. Um, so learn more at www.tcd.ie, and we hope to hear from you. Um, good luck with your college search. I know it's a, I know it's a stressful time. Have fun with your senior year, and um, yeah, talk to you later. Bye, guys.